right, so today I'm going to do a D and D character uh, for this is uh, the idea of this video is to be a tutorial for new people how to paint. Um, I figured I'd start exactly how a new person would start. They just bought the mini. Time to get it out. So I'm just going to start at the beginning and pull the miniature out. Um, this is a Pathfinder Deep Cuts miniature. Uh, you can get them at Galactic, or if you're watching on YouTube, you can get them at your local store. Um, they come pre-primed, as I say down here. So these are great for beginners, which means we can pull them straight out of the box and without any work at all, start painting. So that's what we're going to do. Just going to dump them out here. Chuck the packaging. I'm going to pull out these two little bases that you can or cannot use. Um, I am going to use them just so I can grip the miniatures easier, more easily. So I'm just going to put a little bit of super glue on the bottom. This is not required, but you can do it. Just put a little bit of super glue on the bottom and affix them to the base. Same thing with the other one. And then just let that dry for a couple minutes and we'll be all set. So the idea with this is that, like I said, it's for new painters. So we're going to go through some fairly basic techniques um, for how to paint your miniatures. Um, we might hit a couple more advanced ones also. Um, if you don't know, I'm using a paint handle. Uh, this is You don't have to use one like this. This is from a company um, called Citadel Games Workshop. Um, you don't have to use this though. You can use some like silly putty and attach it to a piece of cork or a bottom of a Coke can or whatever, but it's good to have something like this. You don't have to physically hold the miniature. It helps, uh, a just to get leverage on the miniature, but also if you're holding your miniature, your hands can cramp up and this just makes it easier. So I think we're going to start with this guy. Um, of these two miniatures. We're going to start with this guy. And so when you're first starting off painting, uh, you want to look at, you just want to take a general look at your miniature and see what are the biggest areas you're going to need to focus on and what kind of special details you can add to them. Um, for a, I'm assuming that most people, if you want to pick up these kind of figures, are using them for D&D. &D. So we're just going to look briefly what kind of, what kind of things he's wearing, how are we going to paint him, he looks to be like a, an earth wizard or something. He's got like a, a magic floof, floof here with some rocks in it. So we'll probably paint them like that. But otherwise, we're just going to go straight into it. I'm going to say that he's a, a general purpose wizard. And I think red is going to be a good color for him. So I'm going to start off using uh, corn red. Any, any paint line really works. Um, Galactic does sell this which is by citadel as well as army painter so then i'm just gonna just gonna get some paint on my brush and i'm just gonna go in i'm gonna do his whole tunic here in this color and like i said these miniatures that i'm painting today are pre-prepared in the package we're painting so we don't have to prime them we don't have to wash them wash anything off we don't have to do anything we just have to paint them Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see what i'm doing better so I'm just taking this paint and I'm coating the whole tunic of his. And it's a general idea, uh, generally a good idea rather, that you want to always start with darker colors and work your way up to lighter colors. Uh, it doesn't have to be that way. You can obviously paint in many different ways, but it's generally a good idea to start with a dark color and work up to a lighter color. So when you're painting stuff like the tunic here, um, it's generally a good idea to try to keep paint off the other things, but it is not required because we are going to come back and paint those later. So if some paint spills over, it's not a big deal. I'm just going carefully along here, making sure the entire tunic is covered. And it's also generally a good idea. We're gonna we're gonna do it in this video. Um, 
I will tell you uh, when we get there, you can always stop uh, painting a miniature at certain points and say this is good enough for me and call it a day. I'll point those out to you when we get to them. We're going to do basically three kinds of stopping points if you like. One that is just super basic and I just want some paint on my miniature so I can play D&D. Done. Then a second stopping point that is... Yeah, I just want to play D&D, have some paint on my miniature, but, you know, I'll go a little bit farther. And then one is I want my miniature to, to really stand out, so I'm going to go the extra mile to uh, to make him look good. Or her. Or it. Who knows? So this base coating step is always going to be first, though. I'm just going to get the color down that we need on each section. And you want to try to think about, it's not super important, because most likely, if you're painting for D&D, you're painting how your character looks, and you already have that in your mind's eye. But if you don't, and you're painting just off the cuff, as it were, you want to try to think about general principles of color theory. Uh, they will make your miniatures look better. Not that you need to stick to them for any rule reason or anything, but just the color theory, color theory and the color wheel exists because... We enjoy looking at things that are complementary colors and um, colors that interact well with each other. You obviously can just throw that out the window and paint however you want. But if you're stuck and you're like, man, I really don't know how to make this look good, always go back to the color wheel. And it will give you the answers you seek. So in this case... Since I am not painting this for a specific D&D event, and this is not a specific character for me, this might be a time for that I would look at the color wheel. And when I look at the color wheel, I would see that the complementary color to red is green. And I actually don't know the terminology, but what I call the tertiary color to red would be both towards the purple and towards the orange on the color wheel. So that might be something to think about. All right, so now that I have his whole tunic covered in red, to do the next step, we're gonna have to let that dry. The next step on the tunic, that is. So we're gonna move to a different part of him. And I think we will do the cape. Cape's another big part. Um, and so this, like I was talking about, might be a good opportunity to look at the color wheel and look at complementary colors. But if I just put green on this, there's going to be giant green, giant red. He's going to look like Christmas. We don't want that. So we're not going to do that. We're going to do probably his cape in a neutral color. And then we're going to look for a small area where we might add green back. So in this case, I am going to use a dark gray or a light black. A Corvus black from Citadel. I'm going to put that on the cape. And I'm just going to cover the entire cape in it. Give my paint a good shake. For you new painters, it's always a good idea to shake up your paint. Um, I was painting just before this stream on some different miniatures, so I've been shaking my paint pretty much all morning. But if you are just sitting down to paint first time of the day, you're going to want to shake your paint a little bit more than I just did. Um, I've used this paint several times today, so I knew it was pretty well mixed still. But if you're coming, if you're coming back painting for the first time of the day, maybe shake your paint for... 10, 15, 20 seconds. And then if you pop it open and it's not mixed up, obviously close it back up and shake it some more. But 10, 15 seconds should get you where you need to be. So I'm just covering this whole cape in this color. And often, I don't know how true this is in real life, but I feel like in movies and stuff, I see capes that have a different color on the inside. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use a lighter color on the inside. If you were going for just the, I want paint on this miniature so I can play with him and be done, uh, you might not want to take that step. You might just want to take whatever color you base coat the back of the cape with and do the front also. But we're going to go a little more advanced today. So we are going to paint a different color on the back. Just going to make sure to get the bottom of the cape.
I'll have to... I'll be on, quite honest, I have not... I don't think I've ever worn a cape in real life. Maybe for Halloween. But never, like, just around. So I don't know if the capes come with different colors on the insides. I'll have to look into that. If anyone has cape experience, please let me know. But until then, I'm just going to do a different color on the inside because it looks cool. So I'm just rinsing off my brush. Oh, I forgot to mention at the start, um, if you're just getting into painting, the things you're going to need besides the paint, the brush, and the miniature are a cup of water. I'm just using a old uh, plastic cup. And <clears throat> some paper towel or something to wipe your brush off once you rinse it off. That'll keep your brush nice and clean and you won't have any problems with that. I'm just going to get this little spot I missed here. Either I missed it or I rubbed it off, one or the other. And now we're going to move to the underside of the cape. Like I said, we're going to use a pretty light color for this. I'm going to use Talarn Sand. Uh, and if you're noticing a trend here, I'm using mostly Citadel paints. Um, that is the predominant brand at Galactic. So if you're if you're a local and wanting to pick up paint, that's an option. The other option is this paint. It's called the Army Painter War Paints. Also available at Galactic. If you're watching on YouTube and you're not local, then you should pick up paint, whatever paint your uh, local store sells. Always want to try to support your local store when you can. So I'm just going to come in with this and paint the back of the cape. And these so far are things that uh, can really be any color. Um, obviously anything on any miniature can be any color. But I am going to talk about some things that you want to think about how people are going to perceive uh, these things. So, for instance, when we get to his belt, most people, when they think of a belt, they think of leather or brown. So, it may be a good idea to paint your cape, or rather your belt, leather, a leather color or a brown color. Not required. You absolutely can do any color you want, but something to think about. So now that's done, as you can see, the underside of the cape is painted in that color. We're going to move on, I think, to the boots now. So far, we've done a darker color up top and then two pretty light colors, especially after we highlight. Um, so let's do a darker color for the boots. And for that, I am going to use a color. I'm going to use Dryad Bark. So dark brown. I'm just going to cover the boots, and I think I'm going to do the belts at the same time with this color. And we are rapidly approaching the point where we could say, yep, we've got paint on our miniature, we're ready to go. That's all I need. don't care about it being fancy. I just don't want to have bare plastic at the D&D table is absolutely a fine way to paint. You do not have to get any more fancy than that. But if you want to get more fancy, we will go over that as soon as we're done with this step. So just getting the belt, making sure I get all the parts of the belt in there. I'm going to do the boots. And this is a tip that I always give people when they're painting, is that things on miniatures that are made of different things should never be the same color. So, for instance, if he's got a wooden staff and he's wearing leather boots, those two things should never be the same color, in my opinion, because one is wood and one is leather. That isn't how it would work. They might be similar in color, but they would never be the exact same color. In this case... We're doing the belt and the boots in the same color because it's plausible that both the belt and the boots could be made of the same material. So that it will not be a problem for us. All right, just going to get the other boot here, making sure not to touch. A lot of these miniatures of this brand have this see-through plastic on here. 
You want to make sure you don't touch that with any other color except the color that we are eventually going to use on it because it's going to do some nice tricks for us once we cover it with paint and we don't want to mess those up. Um, we're going to use a slightly transparent paint on that and that will allow us to still see through the clear plastic to make it look like it's an energy spell or something like that but it's not completely opaque. You can, of course, paint it opaque if you want. You can paint it just like we're painting everything else. But I like, since they went to the trouble of making it translucent, let's take advantage of it. So that's the belts and the boots done. And I think, talking of this transparent area, I think we will do that next. So this is the spot where I think I'm going to try to add some green in. And because you can think of colors as light and dark, um as well as saturated and desaturated. So we used our, <coughs> excuse me, we used our corn red, which is a very deep saturated red. <coughs> Gotta take a drink. Ugh. Someone's stuck in my throat. Um, so for the green, we're gonna use a moving towards brown green, which is more desaturated and it's also lighter. This way we will avoid the Christmas looking miniature. Unless you're going for that, of course. I am not in this case. So we're gonna avoid the Christmas look, but we are still gonna get some contrast on this miniature. So for this, I'm using a paint called Plague Bear Flesh, and it is a contrast paint by Citadel. And all that means is that it is more translucent than a normal paint. Um, it's much thinner. And so when we apply it to this clear plastic, we can still see through the plastic. So I'm just going to coat this whole thing with that. And like I said, this green is almost like a brown or a yellow, sort of a puke looking color. And so that will avoid the Christmas look, but still give us the nice color wheel balance of the green and the red. I am, even though the, as you can see, I haven't painted down here yet on this side, but I am going to paint it because it will look better with the paint on both sides. Even though the green is showing through, it'll come out better if I do both sides. Just going to get this last little bit down here. Make sure it's all nice and smooth. And there we go. So we'll come back and do the actual rocks in there later. Just gonna let that dry for now though. And I think I'm gonna move on to the skin. For the skin, I am going to use Kislev Flesh, again by Citadel. Uh, there's a lot of choices for skin tones. Um, you can obviously go, especially in a fantasy setting like D&D, you can go normal earthly skin tones, uh, anywhere from the palest of white to the darkest of black or brown. But, of course, in D&D, you can also go with a completely alien color. You could go with a green or a blue or all sorts of stuff. So that is something to consider. Um, this, I believe, on the package, this is called a elf. Somewhere on this package. Let's see. Yes, he is an elf male sorcerer. So going off that. Elves usually have pretty pale skin. So I'm going to use this color. There are, of course, um, I'm not up on the lore of D&D too much, but I know there are some fantasy universes where some elves have very dark skin, like a, a very dark gray or slightly purplish skin tone. So that would be an option also. Um, but for this one, I'm just going to do your stereotypical elf light skin, pale skin, no blemishes because elves are perfect. And I guess in, in my head I'm going off the idea of a Lord of the Rings elf. That's the, the elves I'm most familiar with. And so I'm just modeling the look of this elf off that. Just 
gonna make sure to get all the skin in here. He's got some skin hiding up next to the there we go. Hiding up next to the spell effect there. And up here next to the staff. Alright. So here's the skin done. I'm now gonna move on to the hair. And just like I was saying, how in my mind the this elf is a Lord of the Rings elf. So I'm going to use some, I'm going to start with some Steel Legion Drab. It's a nice light color. Did you just drink your paint water? No, I absolutely did not. <laughs> I have paint water over here on the right hand side and I have my actual drink on the left hand side. But, you know, desperate times. If I didn't have an actual drink, I might have considered it. Please do not drink your paint water. And especially do not say I told you to. I'm just going to paint the hair here. Making sure to cover the hair completely, but not to get any of this hair color on the cape. We can obviously come back and fix it, but, you know, why take the extra step if we can avoid it? So I'm just going to cover the hair. Um, and going back to the spell effect really quickly, um, I used a paint called a contrast paint on that. We do sell them at Galactic. Um, however, they are more expensive. They're, they're in a bigger bottle, but they are more expensive. You can do almost the exact same thing. It won't be the, won't be an identical effect, but you can do the same thing by just thinning down an existing paint. Just take some paint, put, put it on a little piece of paper or a piece of cardstock or something put some water in it and then brush that on and it will do the same effect. I use the contrast paint because A, I have it right here and B, it dries faster. So I was able to, I'll be able to move on to the next step. As I say that, it's pooling right here. Let me fix that real quick. Sometimes that'll happen with thin down paint. It'll pool in an area. If that does start to happen, you can just, with your clean brush, pull it, pull it around and get it back where it needs to be. So now I'm going to move on to the staff. And for this, I'm going to use Gorthor Brown. Yes, Drow or Dark Elf, referring to the uh, the dark-skinned elves. Yes, correct, the Drow. That's who I had forgotten about. Those would be the type of elves with a very dark skin tone. So I'm just using Gorthor Brown on the staff here. Making sure to get all sides of the staff completely covered. Sometimes they can be a little tricky to get to. The backs of these staves, or backs of anything really. Just gotta spin the miniature around until you're happy with the coverage. Alrighty, now I'm going to go in and I'm noticing a couple spots of the red that I missed the first time around, so I'm just going to clean them up really quick. Good. Happy with that. And then I just have one more color. I'm going to use Wraithbone for this, sort of an off-white cream eggshell sort of color. And I'm going to do his under undergarment there, his undershirt, as well as his pants, thinking that these could possibly be made out of the same material, so they could be the same color. And again, I'm just going to be very careful not to get any of this color on the tunic. Not a problem to come back and clean up, but again, why not try to avoid having to do that if you can? So then as soon as I finish this color, we'll be at our first stopping point. Where, if you wanted, you could be done. Let me just get this last bit of the pants here. Alright. 
So there you go. If you want it to be done right now, you just want to have color on your miniature for a game of D&D, &D, you could just pick a brown or a gray color, paint the base real quick, and you'd be all set, ready to go. However, if you want to go a little bit farther and make it a little more interesting, this from here on is how you would do that. So we're going to start with the main tunic again. We're going to take, this was our original color, our corn red. We're going to take a slightly lighter red, in this case, Mephiston red, and we're going to highlight this red. So how are we going to do that? So I'm going to look at the miniature, and I see that he's got a, like a attachment system for the front of his tunic running down here, and he's got some lines running across here. So we're just going to paint those with this color. Just going to come down right here, paint this, paint these going down there, being careful not to touch our white. This is where I touch the white after saying that. Nope, we're good. Just going to do that all the way around the cloak. Since he's got this line running all the way around the cloak. Good. And then we're going to look, and it looks like he has the same sort of thing on his cuffs. So we're going to do that, the cuffs of his tunic here. So we're going to use the same color and just carefully go over the cuffs. Good. Oh, mess up and get some on the staff. Just going to get a brush with some water on it flood this area with water until we get that red off of there and that was an easy fix because I knew my paint was still pretty thin and wet there but if for whatever reason you ever see a dot of paint like that on something and you can't get rid of it easily just paint over it not a big deal multiple layers of paint will not hurt your miniature all right so there we go it might not be super easy to see on camera but we have added some extra depth to that. Now we're gonna do the same thing to the cape. This cape is gonna do a lot of work for us because it's a big old area, it's flapping out behind him. So highlighting this is gonna be, gonna do a lot for us. So I'm gonna take this sort of lighter gray, uh, Mechanicus standard gray. It's still a pretty dark color, but it is lighter than our original color. And all these ridges in the cape, I'm just gonna paint a line down them. Doesn't have to, have a consistent thickness or anything, just painting down these ridges. Just making sure there's enough paint on the brush to catch them. And we're just gonna go all the way down all of them. Gonna make sure to get the ridges on the front of it too. Okay, and there you go, you're all set. Highlighted just like we did with the front. All right, then we the next detail that we're gonna add is I think probably we're gonna highlight his hair. Hair is a very easy thing to highlight. For that, we're going to use some Dorn Yellow. It's a very bright yellow color. Just gonna get some of this on my brush, wipe most of it off. Make sure my, make sure the bristles have paint on them, but they're not completely saturated. Like that. And then I'm just gonna run the side of my brush down his hair. And this will give you some easy highlights on his hair. Just don't want too much of the color showing in any one spot. Rinse my brush off. And then I'm just going to come in with the wet brush. And just brush all the way down the hair like this. 
some more water on the brush. And this will just sort of blend the two, or the paint down into the brown that we used originally. Just soften it a little bit. Okay. Now his hair, from, from up close, his hair looks like, what did you do to his hair? What the heck? But from on the table, let me zoom out here. On the table, when you're playing with your miniature, it'll just look like he's got some darker bits of hair and lighter bits of hair, which is good. Hair is not all the time exactly monochromatic. So then we're going to add, we're going to pick out these rocks here that are inside of his his energy blast that he's doing. So for that, I'm going to use a very light gray, administratum gray. And I'm just going to pick out all those rocks. Just being careful not to touch the green. just to make sure that these rocks have some color on them. Just making sure to pick them all out. There are a bunch. They're all sitting out everywhere. This guy is really like, he's tearing this ground up. He's getting all these rocks flinging at his enemies here. Alright, so just like that, and then we're going to come in back here and paint the backs of all these rocks that we just painted. Make sure they're the same color on all sides. Okay, that looks to be about good. Oh, one more side to grab here. That looks to be about good. Alrighty, and right there, I think, we are back to another point where if this was as far as you wanted to go, oh, I see a tiny bit of black we missed. But as I'm fixing this little tiny bit of black, um, if this is as far as you wanted to go, this would be a great stopping point. You've got your base colors down, you've got highlights to some of those colors on there, and you've picked out some other details. Um, Again, you just do something real quick to the base, paint it a color, and it'd be all set. But let's say you still want to go one step further than that, moving even more in the direction of a detailed model. So what are the next sort of things we could do? So we're going to start with the cloak again. We started with the corn red. Then we moved to the Mephiston red, slightly lighter. Now we're going to move to Wild Rider red even lighter, almost orange, than all the others. And we're going to pick out some details on his cloak using this color. Actually, after looking at it, we're not going to use that color. We're going to use this color instead, Evil Sun Scarlet. Very similar, but slightly more red than the original. I'm just shaking the paint up here. And then we are going to pick out some different parts of his cloak. So let's see what we can pick out here. Let's just see. Paint doesn't want to mix today. Okay. So, get some paint on the brush here. Then we're just going to come and we're going to do ever so slightly little lines down the sides of his cloak here. This will give just a slight highlight to all these pieces. I'm going to run right down the middle of this middle of his cloak here. I'm going to run along the edges of his cuffs.
just like that. Do the other cuff. And then I'm just gonna pick out the high points of his cape or his cloak back here and just do some slight little touches with this. So these corners down here. And then one right back here. So that'll be that. And that just gives a little more highlight to that. Then we're gonna go on to the skin, because the skin has so far just been a single color. So then I'm going to use a paint that is referred to in painting circles as liquid skill. And it is called liquid skill because when you apply it to things, first of all, it's very liquidy. It's called Agrax Earthshade. It's very liquidy. You can maybe see it rolling around in there. And when you apply it to things, it's going to shade your recesses, meaning the crevices and cracks of whatever you're shading and pull off of the high points. So if we're looking at his face, his face is just monochromatic right now, you can't really see the detail. We're gonna take some Agrax Earthshade and we're just gonna put it all over the face. Get under his neck in there, under his hairline, all that stuff. So then immediately you can now see, you can see his mouth, you can see his nose, you can see his eyes, his hairline, all this stuff. That's why people call it liquid skill. You just apply it and things look better. So I'm gonna apply it all over the staff as well as his hands. Just like that. I'm going to put it in his hair so that we get some high and low points on his hair. like that I'm gonna do it on his other hand and then this is more of an advanced technique that I'm about to do um, but I'm gonna do it very targeted on his cloak so I'm not just gonna apply it all over the cloak I'm just gonna run it in the cr creases of the cloak that I can see so in there in there down along the side here, on here. Like I said, it might take some more advanced technique to do this. It might take a little bit of practice before you get your brush control down, but you absolutely can get there without too much trouble. So I'm just going down along the edges and then I'm gonna go along the horizontal edges here. Just making sure to not apply too much paint to cover the whole thing, but enough that we get some shading. Just go in there along his belt line. Back in there. And then make sure his belt line is nice and shaded on the front here. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the spot where his cape meets his cloak. Just making sure it's nice and shaded. Just like that. And then I think I'm going to put it in the recesses of his cloak. It will turn the cloak slightly to a brown color, but that's okay. It will not turn it that much to brown, but it will give it more of a natural feel to it. Like maybe there's some dirt on it or what have you. Since true black is not a very common occurrence in the real world. I'm just going to do it on his boots also, just around the, the tops of his boots here. Just to get a little bit of shading in there. This can also help you hide mistakes if you've gone over a color a little bit too much into an area where it shouldn't be. You can just hide it with some of that. So then we're almost done. The last thing we're going to do is spruce up this spell effect a little bit here. So we're gonna take some other liquid skill, a different color this time, same exact type of paint, this time called Nuln Oil. Same exact type of paint in that it's very watery, but it is a black color instead of a brown color. And we're gonna put it on the rocks in this spell effect, just to give them a little bit of definition. So 
so they don't just look like random gray shapes at the end here. Some of them you can apply more to, some less. This will be good. Rocks are not all the same color. Some can be darker, some can be lighter. It's not a big deal. All right, that about does that. So I'm gonna let that dry, making sure that this black paint does not get on this green of the spell effect itself. I'm gonna let that dry and think about what else we could possibly do to this guy to spruce him up a little bit. Um, if you wanted to, you could go into the face and put some highlights on that. Um, I think I'll do that just for show. Um, I'm gonna use Wraithbone for this again, the same color we used on his pants. Just going to put a very, very, very small amount of it on my brush, uh, just like this, oh, just like that, and then I'm just going to touch the bridge of his nose with it, just like that. And then I'm also going to do the same thing on the cheekbones, just touch it, just like that. Doesn't change too much, but it is noticeably different. So then I'm still waiting for this null oil that we put on the rocks to dry. I'm just going to grab some that's pooling. And then while we let that dry, I am going to paint the base. Let's just check the time. Yep, 43. We've got plenty of time. So I'm just going to pick any old color. It doesn't really matter. Um, let's see. I guess I will use... I'll use the Gorthor Brown we used on the staff. That'll be fine. I'm just gonna grab this and I'm gonna paint the black part of the base. I'm gonna use a bigger brush for this. Paint the black part of the base as well as his base. Huh. There we go. And then I'll show you some some other possible things you can do to these bases too. Make them look even a little cooler. Not required though, you could even just paint them black. Um, a lot of D&D players I know will just paint the bases black. And that way they're not sticking out in an environment where they don't make sense. Just use them as a barrier between the world of the miniature and the world of the board. But, in this case, I'm going to paint it brown. Doesn't have to be exactly 100% covered, just a brown color. And then, if you want to get really fancy, at Galactic, or at your local store, wherever that may be, um, they most likely, at Galactic we definitely do, but um, other stores may sell them also, are these things called grass tufts. They're just little... Little balls of grass, basically. You pull them off, stick them onto your figure, and away we go. So this, they are pre-adhesive. Um, so they have a little bit of sticky stuff on the bottom of them. Combined with our wet paint here, they will stick on very easily. So I'm just going to place one there. Tap it down, and it'll be there. I'm going to get another one, maybe a smaller one. I think I'm going to grab this one with a pair of tweezers. Just going to grab it like this and put it right there. Just going to push it down, make sure it's stuck. And then I think I'll grab a different color, maybe more of a, a bush looking color. And I'll just stick this maybe right in there. Maybe if it wants to cooperate. There we go. Stick that right in there. Then I think one more of one other color, just to mix it up a little bit. This is more of a dead yellowy color. I'll put that right in here, right behind his leg. Just stick that in there. So that's an easy way to get a decent looking base on a miniature. Just a single color and then some tufts. Not a problem, but like I said, you can just paint it a single color, no big deal. 
So the very last thing we're going to do to finish sprucing up this spell effect is we're going to use some Tesseract Glow. This is a very bright, almost neon green color. And we're going to take it and load up our brush with it. As you can see, load up the brush crazy like. And then we're just going to dip this brush straight in the water. Then we're going to wick the excess water off on our paper towel. I'll show you what that means. So we have our paper towel. We're just going to wick off the excess liquid. We're just going to touch and touch. And then now with this paint, we're just going to go along all over the spell effect. If we hadn't dipped it in the water and then wicked off the excess water, it would have been overpowering and would have completely killed the other paint that we put on the spell effect. But by basically thinning it down by just dipping it straight in the water, we allowed it to thin out a little bit and this will help it not kill. So again, load up the brush, dip it in the water, wick off the extra liquid, and then come down the back. And that will give us some variation in the spell. And if you're really feeling feisty, you can take some of this stuff, dip it in the water, wick it off. I wicked it off too much. That happens sometimes. Load up your brush, dip it in the water, wick off the excess liquid. And then since he's a wizard, uh, and he's got a staff looking thing, it's conceivable that he may have derived his power from the staff. So I'm just going to take some of this green and put it on the staff. Like the spell may be originating from the staff. Just going to put that there. Just like that. So that the staff is helping cast the spell. So yeah, that basically does it for this model. Um, this would be, this is not a crazy and um, insane or complicated paint job. They're pretty not insane models. They're pretty basic models. But this would be perfectly good for a game of D&D &D or any game that requires a wizard. Um, like I said before, there were two points where we could have stopped. One, just the base coats. Those That was an absolutely fine place to stop. And then again, uh, base coats and some simple highlights could have stopped there. But this is the final step if you want to just go the little bit of the extra mile and show off a little bit of your painting skill. Um, but yeah, other than that, that'll be it for this episode. Uh, I'll be back on this group streaming again next week doing something else related to simple style of painting for D&D &D or maybe board game miniatures or something like that. So thanks everybody for watching and I will hopefully see you next time.